Okay, who wants to take a look through the Dick Blick catalog with me? Dick Blick is an art store. Uh, Blick, holiday savings, 70% off list price with free shipping. Uh, they're, they're more of a hardcore art store than, say, um, Michael's is. Michael's is more of an arts and crafts store. Dick Blick has crafts too, but uh, they got a lot of uh, more hardcore art supplies. And I actually use their website all the time. They've got an they've got an actual physical store in Paramus, New Jersey, which is about 45 minutes from me. But uh, I don't go there that often. The website's cheaper too. Uh, your holiday sh shopping guide. There, there, there's a nice Bob Ross figure for you. Let's see what we got in this one. Up oh, markers. There's some Blick markers. There's some Copic markers. And um, markers used to be not... The markers used to be in the ad agencies. Like these ones over here. These chart pack markers were what like in the 80s all the ad agency guys used those to make what they call marker comps with. Before you were, before any ad was made, the marker comp guys will be drawing up sketches of them using these markers. Uh, and other than that, it was like, you know, teenagers who used markers or something. They weren't really a fine art tool. But then sometime, I don't even know when it was, 15, 20 years ago, Copic upped the marker game. And, um... They started making markers that were more archival because marker ink used to just fade away after a few years. The Copic marker ink became more archival and more reliable in that um, in the old days your marker ink could vary from batch to batch, from marker to marker. With Copic, when you pulled out your Tahitian blue, you knew it was always going to be the same color. So now we got all these knockoff, like knockoff marker. Um, Copic marker stuff for cheaper than Copic. Like these blick, when you see that shape with the double ends and the chisel and the brush, you know it's a not, you know, that they're copying the Copic design. So they're the ones who uh, originated it. And they're still, you know, very good markers, but you can get other ones too. Like Sharpies, Sharpies, despite the fact that they say are permanent, the ink really isn't permanent. It isn't archival permanent. It's just permanent if you're going to, you know, wash your, wash your, <laughs> write your name in your underwear and wash your laundry, the ink will stay. There's a whole bunch of different type of markers, including technical pens that are there with the pink rim. There's some different black markers. All this stuff is pretty popular these days, these markers. Look at that big Sharpie set over there. That's like every color Sharpie makes. Who, who knew they made that many color Sharpies? And here we go with colored pencil sets, and once again, colored pencil sets aren't really a professional medium. There are some illustrators who work in colored pencils, but generally it's not considered a professional medium. But they're fun. Lots of fun. I actually have like three or four different colored pencil sets that every now and then I buy a set and swear I'm going to do something with them, but never quite do. <laughs> Because I'm not a huge fan of colored pencil, but I like the sets. I mean, look at how cool the sets look. All the colors lined up. Wow. Sometimes the <laughs> I like the sets better than working with them. What else do we have here? Pastel watercolor pencil set. Oh, watercolor pencils are the ones where you can draw with them and then take a take some brush and water and smear them around. And pastel pencil sets are like colored pencils with really soft pastel leads. Ah, I was never a fan of these mannequins. I could never do anything with them. And these days you can find um, actually good sort of artist reference mannequins that are mo much, much more like action, uh, action figures that you can pose. Like, <laughs> that barely looks like a person. The action figure ones, I think, are a lot more posable and work a lot better than those mannequin ones. So they've upped the, some people, some, some companies have upped their game on those artist model things. Ah, here's the pastel sets. I bought a set of pan pastels about 10 years ago and barely ever used them. So I wanted to try them out, but never did. But pastels are actually one of the messiest mediums. You would think that uh, pastels wouldn't be so messy. I think they're messier than paints. Because with paints, if you're careful, you don't get paint everywhere. 
but whenever you whenever you draw with a pastel dust falls off it like colored dust so when as you're working dust builds up under your drawing and you end up with getting pastel dust everywhere but occasionally like I said, when i do those monsters on comics i use a white pastel matter of fact i think i use a rembrandt but that's the only time i use pastels ah here's watercolor paper watercolor paper is very generally very good and very expensive i use some of this uh, cheaper fabriano paper watercolor paper for my um big ink drawings it's not really great watercolor paper but it's great big ink drawing paper so and and, and over here is more di and they see hot press is smooth and cold press is rough watercolor paper that's what they call it here's a stonehenge paper i think this is for making prints on all this oh uh, it's also pastel paper coat pa <laughs> no it's funny Here's some pastel sandpaper. And all and a lot of times the pastel paper is like a sandpaper, so it could grab that dust that falls off and keep all that pigment on the paper. And I can remember way back when I was in school in the 80s, there were a couple of people working in pastel, and they're always buying this, and this stuff, this pastel paper is expensive. And they hated buying it because it was so expensive. But they were just like, ah, oh, I want to get the good pastel paper. And if you were a pastel person, you liked Degas, who did the dancers and such things. Because he's like one of the, really the only fi famous, really famous fine artist who worked in pastel. And I remember, I didn't find out until years after I was out of school that Degas didn't work on fancy pastel paper. He worked on tracing paper. <laughs> so all these people who were trying to copy Degas were working on the expensive paper instead of the cheap paper like he used. Various sketch sketch there's there's the five by eight one i use all the time for my ink book drawings and i use this yellow 300 strathmore sometimes now the 400 is more a little more expensive and a little better paper but i don't you need the better paper when you're doing a lot of sort of erasing or penciling and inking on the same paper this is i print my stuff out in blue line and don't erase hard on it this this paper is bad the difference between the good paper and the bad paper as a lot of times the good paper can take more abuse it can take more working it the the lesser paper you really can't work it as hard ah uh, i'm a of course a sketchbook fiend like every artist is every single artist you'll find has more sketchbooks than they have time to work in them and i'm the same oh look some blick oil colors uh, I haven't worked in oil. Oh, this is the must. Yeah, blick oil, all sorts of blick oil colors. I haven't worked in oil. I used to work in oil all through the 90s and up until the early 2000s when I switched over to acrylic for a change of pace. Oh, here's more oil colors. You see, this is the hardcore stuff. You, you know, you have to know what you're doing in this section. You have to know what brand you want, what color you want. There's some nice sets, though. You can always start there if you want to start with oil colors more hand, oil like handmade oil colors i guess they're not machine made artist oil colors you know turpenoid instead of turpentine a lot more oil color now what do we got here oh the holiday gift guide this is for your everyday person buying stuff and it although everyday person's not buying this airbrush set but uh oh there's some bob ross set stuff got a bob ross chia pet all the bob ross tools you want what else do we have here? Oh, some special shiny paints, stocking stuffers. You get blick markers, shiny pens. This, this is for somebody who, you know, you're buying a gift for somebody who's an artist and maybe just starting out, you get some of that stuff. Oh, here's this fun stuff for kids and such projects. This, this is more along the craft store stuff, but, you know, it's good for kids. Uh, and here's the, you know, starting sets of pastels and colored pencils and, get you know, you get yourself a $20 set of colored pencils and a, you know, uh, $10 sketchbook and you're good to go as a gift for someone who wants to draw stuff. There's the same thing here, watercolor sets and this is all for buying people presents in here. Princeton Artist Brush Company, here's some more, you know, different, different acrylic sets 
and things. If you want to get someone for someone who's artistic in your life, you get them one of those sets. Card making supplies. All right, that's if you want to make cards for people. Like I said, the, 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 this middle section is for um, for everyday people who like to do art stuff. All sorts of stuff in here. Then we get to the easel section. I built an easel out of scrap wood when I got out of school in like the late 80s. And I've been using it ever since. I always wanted to buy one of these fancy easels, but I never have. Because the one I have works fine. More furniture. I don't like any of these chairs or desks, but you know. <laughs> I would look long and hard getting a chair and desk. Oh, here's framing stuff. I was never really into framing. Framing my art. I like to hold it in my hand, but plenty of framing stuff. Here we go into some oh, water mixable oils. This is some, I've never tried these. These are some special, they say it's oil paint, but you don't mix it with linseed oil. You mix it with water and it cleans up with water. I don't know what that's all about. Makes me a little suspicious, but it's been around for 20 years now. Here's the acrylic section. Once again, this is more all sorts of different, you gotta know what you're doing in this section. You gotta know what brand you want. You gotta know what kind of acrylics you want. The heavy body, the regular, the the student grade acrylics, the professional grade acrylics, stuff like that. The liquid acrylics, the heavy body acrylics. All sorts of different brushes. Once again, this is what you, you gotta know what kind of individual brushes you're interested in and what brand. There's some watercolor brushes that you fill the handles with water. So look at the middle section is for sort of the everyday artist and the back section is for the hardcore. You gotta know what you're doing artist. Also more brushes. Pre-stretched canvas. So this is, you know, you're buying canvas. Uh, you want it already stretched rather than stretching it yourself. Here's all, you know, all different sizes. You gotta know what you're doing here. You all different depths on your canvas. You know, what is these wood panels you can paint on instead of canvas? So we got shaped wood panels. So you gotta know what you're doing here once again in this section. Then what do we got here? Okay, still more another page of canvas. So you got uh, six pages or so of canvas there. So you know that's 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 not for your everyday printmaking stuff. I, I'm, I don't need, I've never even done printmaking. There's a printmaking press. That's where you, you know, you draw something on some kind of block and then you put paper over it and put pressure on the paper and it transfers the print to the paper. What do we got? Ceramics. I've never done ceramics. So there's some of that back there. Airbrushing. I did airbrushing in my youth, but not a lot since, but there's an airbrush and all the airbrush stuff. In the age of computers, airbrushing is kind of not done as much. Random colored tapes and scissors and exacto blades and stuff. New Tombow Pro alcohol marker set. So there you go. A little look at the Blick holiday savings catalog and you guys all have a good week out there.